the story of Softy Mars is the story of a 3D software that did not find a home except in the hearts of the artist who used it over the decades to create amazing pieces of artwork. Softimage was a genius 3D program that was ahead of its time. At one point of its life cycle, it reached new heights and became the number one 3D package in the 90s and despite its limited toolset, it was super fast to use with a highly intuitive UI. Softimage was able to get things done quickly and clients loved it leaving the industry at large trying to integrate its features into their own products. Softimage was used by the biggest VFX studios like ILM to create blockbusters such as Jurassic Park, Terminator 2, Titanic, Man in Black, Spawn and The Fifth Element. It was also used to create amazing video games at the time from the Japanese Resident Evil series, Silent Hill Trilogy, Half-Life, the Legend of Zelda, Star Wars video games and much more. Despite its success in the industry of video games and VFX for film, Softimage did not really find a home as Nick Weber, senior VFX TD at Milk VFX said, Softimage has been passed around from company to company over the years like a CGI hot potato. It's as if they never knew what to do with this eccentric genius child. But from what we know about 3D programs that came and went over the years, Softimage probably was the most impressive, and like any 3D program no longer developed, Softimage's absence from the industry is sad. But when we evaluate what Softimage managed to accomplish while it was alive, it's hard not to be appreciative of how it went out. This is the story of the rise and fall of Softimage. In 1996, National Film Board of Canada filmmaker Daniel Longois, in partnership with software engineers Richard Marseille and Laurent Lausan, began developing an integrated 3D modeling, animation, and rendering package with a graphical interface targeted at visual artists. The software was initially demonstrated at Seagraph in 1988 and was released for Silicon Graphics workstations for the following year as the Softimage creative environment. For the first time, modeling, animation, and rendering was integrated in a single package. Softimage Creative Environment was adopted by major visual effects studios like Industrial Light and & Magic and Digital Domain for use in their production pipelines, which also typically included software from Alias Research, Croyor Films, Angel Studios, and Pixar Animation Studios, as well as a variety of custom tools. Its character animation tool set expanded substantially with the addition of inverse kinematics in version 2, which was used to animate the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. In 1994, Microsoft acquired Softimage with the intention of introducing high-end 3D animation software to its Windows NT platform, and subsequently renamed it Softimage 3D. In January 1995, Softimage 3D was announced as the official 3D development tool for the Sega Saturn. The first Windows port of Softimage 3D version 3.0 was released in early 1996. Softimage 3D Extreme 3.5 released later that year. Included particle effects and the mental ray renderer, which offered area lights, ray tracing, and other advanced features. 3D paint functionality was added a year later in version 3.7. Softimage DS was launched in 1997, an editing and effects system that was tied to highly performance hardware for the time to allow finishing off commercials and music videos. This is back in the day when hardware restrictions meant that most editing was done using relatively low quality previews. Then in 1998, Avid bought Softimage from Microsoft for $2.85 million, though there were hints it was more after Softimage DS to complement Avid's own Symphony finishing system. Around the same time, in February 1998, SGI subsidiary Alias Wavefront was releasing its character animation and visual effects software Maya 1.0. This had some immediate advantages over Softimage, as Martin Chimney said. When Maya 1.0 arrived, it was a superior system with the power of MEL scripting language. Many larger film FX companies built their pipelines around Maya, and when XSI was released, it had a lot to catch up with. Softimaz struck back with the redevelopment from the ground up Softimaz XSI in 2000. This introduced a non-linear animation editing and mixing system, strong interactive rendering, a particle system, compositing, and ActiveX scripting. 
Nick Weber from Milk VFX said about this. Early on, XSI has huge advantages over Maya, particularly Manta Ray integration. Modeling was fast. It had an interface ahead of its time. There was the render tree and built-in compositing. And of course, the animation tools, render layers, and huge data sets. Later, ICE made it unique, and others were envious. Introduced in 2008, ICE Interactive Creative Environment allowed non-programmers to control elements within scenes in XSI, such as camera particles and light properties, simply by connecting nodes on a graph. Wade Duncan Smith, Senior Technical Director at Invisible, said, When the ICE effect system was introduced, it greatly increased the capacity of what Softimas could do. Most importantly, it was fast and gave an edge above Maya. The problem is when XSI was introduced, Maya has already established itself. By this point, Maya was the 3D suite of choice for feature film visual effects and had become a crown jewel for Autodesk, which had acquired Alias in October 2005. In October 2008, Autodesk acquired the Softimage application from Avid for approximately $35 million in what was widely regarded as a bargain buyout, though Avid continued with the DS product line. According to an official statement released by the two companies, upon completion of the acquisition, Autodesk intended to continue developing and selling Softimage's core product line while integrating certain Softimage technology into future versions of Autodesk solutions and products. Autodesk plans were to acquire and continue developing the following Softimage products. Softimage XSI including XSI Essentials, XSI Advanced, XSI Academic, XSI Mod Tool, and the XSI Software Development Kit. Softimize Face Robot, which is a complete software solution for easy rigging and animation of 3D faces. Softimize CAD, this advanced character animation system is a plugin for Autodesk 3ds Max software intended to be integrated into the 3ds Max product line. Softimize Crosswalk, this interoperability solution is intended to be integrated with Autodesk's own interoperability technology. Mark Petit, Senior Vice President of Autodesk Media and Entertainment commented, as we have demonstrated since the acquisition of Alias in 2006, we are committed to giving our customers choice when it comes to their 3D tools. We plan to maintain and grow the Softimage product line, and though Autodesk FBX provide better interoperability between Softimage products, 3ds Max, and Autodesk Maya. In February 2009, Softimage XSI was rebranded Autodesk Softimage and has since continued to be developed as part of the Autodesk Entertainment Creation Suite, together with former rivals Maya and 3ds Max. Dan Upton, a lighting TD at Jellyfish, said, One can't help it but to assume that Autodesk bought it to harvest its technology, then engineer its downfall. This accusation has been thrown at Autodesk regularly since it bought Softimage. For a while, every Autodesk press conference related to its CG products would include a journalist asking when Autodesk will kill Softimage, initially seriously and then as a running joke. Autodesk itself prefers to see its approach as letting Softimage live on in other products. Maurice Patel, Autodesk Entertainment Industry Manager, said about this, the acquisition of Softimage led to several major enhancements in other Autodesk products, as well as to new other areas of research and innovation such as Project by Frost, and he was referring to its new fluid simulation system that's 50% ICE and 50% NIAT system that Autodesk bought. In March 2014, Autodesk published Softimage's final release announcement, telling its users that the 2015 release is the last one for Softimage, which was shipped on April 14, 2014. Autodesk assured its clients that it will offer product support until April 30, 2016, and that they are going to provide Softimage support services to all Softimage customers with Autodesk subscription at no cost. Autodesk also offers Softimage subscription customers a special no-cost option to migrate to either 3ds Max or Maya software while continuing to use Softimage in production. Autodesk said that they were focusing their development efforts on 3ds Max and Maya to better serve the needs of the media and entertainment industry and provide customers with better products faster. According to Autodesk Entertainment Industry Manager Maurice Patel, 
the decision to kill Softimage was taken to focus on the company's effort on its core 3D tools and he said the industry continues to evolve very rapidly and consumers are demanding a faster rate of innovation across all products lines including Softimage. 3ds max and maya given this we needed to focus our resources on where there was the greatest customer need which is 3ds max and maya in order to accelerate our development plans while some firms continue to use softimize for the foreseeable future moving on to another applications was inevitable and a lot of artists and studios were saddened by this news which led to an entire section of the industry that found itself in a position to have to be retrained to use a new software. Jellyfish Pictures is well known for its use of Softimize. The company's CTO, Jeremy Smith, said, Its appeal was that it was relatively easy for skilled users of other 3D software to learn. If you've never used this package before, it won't take long to get up and running. Softimize also has a great workflow as there is different sections for each stage of the production, modeling, animation, rendering, and so on. Everything is well integrated rather than features being slapped on. David Cook, a senior 3D artist at Jellyfish, commented, Softimize was extremely capable, but more importantly was very agile. That made it very suitable for broadcasts where there is a requirement for high-end material on a friction of a feature budget. Maya has more features, but a lot of them are just bolted on and not very suitable without a lot of code support that is not available in small or mid-sized companies. Most of the features in Softimage are well integrated and thought out and it doesn't feel like there is a lot of redundancy in the structure. The decision to discontinue Softimize has been met with dismay and some anger within the VFX community. Some hardcore users haven't been happy to let Softimize go gently into that good night. There is a petition already up on change.org to save Softimize, but many users were resigned to the demise of what was long regarded as a brilliant artistic tool. I hope you found this useful. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.